Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to some more Scrap Mechanic Survival. I'm here at the remote factory base packaging farm thing. And first, I want to say thank you for your comments. Very few of them were good. A lot of them were complete crap. But I do appreciate you guys taking the time and effort to try to help me out or insult me. Here we are. This episode, I have moved the farm like I said I was going to. And I've actually created a wider scale and semi-expandable version of that small farm over there. It went from 16 blocks to now 18 because I can do three sets of nine or two sets of nine so far. And then I can probably make another one of these and have another plot of 18 right here because I believe nine times nine is 18. I don't know my math is probably wrong there. I'm gonna actually spend this first couple minutes to explain what I have here so I don't have to do a tutorial. So if you wanna really just see it in action or see what else that I've made and kind of get on with it, uh, hopefully I'll put a timestamp or something that you can skip to so you don't need to figure out what I did here. I probably forgot to even put the timestamp. Oops, my bad. Right now, what we have here is a seed planter because we can't use a spud gun. Like I said before, like any other farm, we have to use a vacuum pipe attached to a chest with seeds, which is good. All we have here is pretty much the basic, you know, planting setup. I have it on a single piston and this piston basically just extends out to the left here on the, let's just call this the Y axis. And then this long one will be the X axis. Basically what we have here is this seed planter attached to a piston, which is attached to a controller. And what else, another thing that's also attached to the seed planter is a bearing I completely forgot about. And what it does, it starts off at an angle. This is at 83 degrees. And then every five seconds, which is at the very slowest rotation of the uh, level three at, or level four component. I'm pretty sure it's just all all controllers have five seconds for the slowest thing. I don't know what the fastest is yet, but every five seconds it goes seven degrees lower and then 27 degrees the next five seconds and then it resets and goes 34 degrees back. So basically it returns back to its original 83 degree offset position and then it waits a little bit and then it does it again and then repeats that. So it repeats that three times, allowing it to hit the farthest to the closest. And then it goes back and then farthest to closest and then farthest to closest, as you can see. So every time that repeats, basically this six piston extends out three and then six. And so it kind of makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Next is the watering. I wanted to attach it to the same little planting piece, but that couldn't really work. Um, and what I have here is it's on the same controller actually. It goes eight, uh, let's see, it goes, yeah. So it goes zero, five, and then stays there. And then it goes zero, eight, 15, zero, zero, eight, 15, zero, zero, eight, 15. And that's basically what it does is every five seconds it extends out these three and then extends out the next three, the next uh, five seconds and then resets. So it's pretty much the same. You'll see it in action and hopefully you guys can understand a little bit better. But you may be wondering what I did to actually get these things to like shoot on time. And that is this small little system right here, which all it does is you press this button or if I turn it on and have it go automatically, it turns on this bit and this bit is connected to the controller. This controller is the one that sets off the every five seconds thing and you know, pretty much the automation of the movement of these waters and planters. The next bit this is like, okay, so this is like the master bit on the bottom, the top, it now sets off these two top bits. And this bit is the one that sets the, tells it to plant every, I believe it's every 33 ticks. So if I take five or 200 divided by four, I forget exactly the math. There was a lot of math that I had to do to figure it out. But basically I just make sure that every, like I can shoot three times per five seconds. And that basically is the first three and then the next five seconds will be the next three. So that seven degrees offset and then that negative 27 degree offset basically goes all to three, all to these things at a consistent speed and a consistent time. So I can just pretty much plant consistently, which is really awesome because I wasn't expecting Scrap Mechanic to have consistent physics to actually even be able to do that. So that was nice. And then this top bit here is the stop bit for when it is reaches this reset point. So basically what it does is just fills up a 9.875 timer. <laughs> I forget the math or whatever did it to do it, but it basically fills up that timer, um, tells it to stop planting whenever it's moving its piston and trying to reset back to the original position. 
And then basically all I do, lastly, is this master bit is connected to a 55 second timer. Once it reaches the end, it turns off this bit and makes everything go back to normal. So I don't have to worry about looping and whatnot. And so that's pretty much the whole planting and watering system. The watering system is actually connected to the same exact uh, bit that sets off the planter. So basically they will water at the same time. What I'm gonna do here is hopefully, this should work hopefully, is turn on this switch. And then I believe there is a button here to press to, pl to plant everything. It is this one. And so let's just watch it in action real quick as the night comes. So I'll just do a better angle right here. So you can see the watering moving over. It's moving forward. It comes here and then it changes the angle. It has to wait for the reset bit to stop, to time out. That's why it has a weird delay between each section or each row, but it's just to keep things you know, safe for now. I just want to make sure it's consistent. That's the only reason why it takes so long. So it takes around 55 seconds to plant. I think maybe a little bit less than that, but that's okay. So yeah, on this last part, what I actually have here because of these pipes being in the way is I have this angle just change. I don't know if you guys just saw that, but the angle of the watering just kind of moved up further so that it could shoot here and it worked. So that's all the plants. That's 19, 18, 18 crops planted. And so everything is going back to normal. This is going to start to reset as this 55 second timer cools down. And that's pretty much the auto planting system. Next will be the auto watering or the auto harvesting system. It's really simple. What it does is it has a sensor right here and it basically detects if anything in here grows. And if it does grow, then it turns on. It then goes to a 60 second delay timer to hopefully, I haven't really tested it out fully yet. I just put this in, is to hopefully it has enough, it delays enough for the rest of the crops to grow at once so that I don't waste any crops on accident because that would be unfortunate. If not, I can just add a more delay. But basically once that, once both of these are on, this sets off the harvesters and that sucks it up. And then this extends a piston down to this sensor, which then starts off, sets this master bit again and it starts planting again, if that makes any sense. So I took someone's, or there's a couple suggestions actually to detach the harvesting system from the farm. It will reduce, it'll re reduce lag is what they told me. Um, it didn't really change much to be honest, but it's, you know, it's something. So I'm not gonna, you know, say it was a bad idea, but I did it anyways. And so to get around not having it all attached at the same time, I just have it going down to the sensor here and it works. Perfect. Okay. So that's the end of explaining my auto planting system. Welcome to you guys who skipped forward to this point. I will now just show off what I did to the connection point. Hopefully you guys can see, I know it's nighttime. Um, you're not going to see the raid because all I do is just stand behind. They just kind of get stuck <laughs> back this well and don't do anything. So that's okay. It will be only level one and level two raids depending on how much I plant. And if I do another one, the highest I can get to is probably level three and that's, you know, pushing it. So, okay, moving forward, going into our packaging area. I just have a simple pipe going over top, out and down. The frame rate is much better than last time. So. I'm actually happy that I did it because I even fit more plants in at the same time. So that's cool. What we have here now is the same system that I was using. It's the four pipes or four pumps connected to these planting areas. I have some automation I do plan on doing so that at some point I'll be able to choose which fruits or vegetables or roll well, vegetables only, <laughs> which vegetables I want to plant or package at that one point, but I don't have that set up yet, um, but that's okay. So basically it comes down here and if I turned on, I have some carrots in here, I think. I grew a lot of carrots while testing. So um, if I turn this on, it basically turns on this clock and that puts all of this uh, into the packaging container and that launches the package out. So I'm gonna wait for daytime to show you my little package launcher or catcher and mover thing, but I haven't built the vehicle to hopefully move these packages to the package, to the trader station yet so that's going to be the goal for this episode if i can even do it i don't know if i'll be able to do a good one in one episode so it'll take a while while i'm here i actually want to talk about some ideas that i've had so when i'm finished with this project i think i will be done with this world unless i get a really like amazing idea from someone to do in like vanilla survival 
my next series or you know i guess videos that i'll be putting out will be um me making an actual automated factory with vehicles and ai and all sorts of things that help with packaging but in that episode or in that kind of series i will be using unlimited inventory and other various cheats so that it makes my life a lot easier because i'm kind of tired of spending hours i spent 12 or so hours yesterday trying to record this episode but it didn't work because i didn't have the materials and i spent like hours trying to like gather them and all this stuff so i will probably start a new world and just everything in that world will be cheated in at some point or gathered but probably mostly cheated in so i can get things faster and then the whole point of that will be an actual automated factory that will probably encompass this entire tile right here so be excited for that if you guys want to see that leave a like if you don't want to see that uh, leave a comment or something i don't know yeah that's one idea that i've had my next idea is adding is having a you know how I, I don't want to I, yeah, I guess I am I'm jumping on the bandwagon so you know how like people um, have these challenges in Minecraft and they get money for winning these challenges and whatnot I don't want to mention any names in case of you know copyright stuff but I think they have a cool thing going for them and I want to test out the multiplayer capabilities of scrap mechanics so far and so I want to hold some competitions for people who want to play and do some you know competitions and we can do some crazy silly stuff and it won't be all just build the best vehicle type things it'll be kind of fun things that i'll come up with so and there'll be prizes there'll be cash prizes there won't be a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars yet once i start making more money then i'll have the cash prices increase but if you guys want to do that or hop in let me know on the discord or in the comments and i'll definitely uh consider it more and start getting that started and don't worry scrap mechanic auto racing league is still coming i just finished uh painting some ducks so i can add some <laughs> spectator to the stands so that was fun all right it's now morning the tote bots that tried to attack the farm are now running away which is good and that means it's light enough out for me to show off my little catcher that i have so we have a pitcher here and a catcher there take that as you will and this is a pretty simple contraption i didn't want people were saying to make a conveyor belt but i didn't want to make that many wheels and so i just made this right here and it's i mean you guys can probably tell what this happens i'm just going to show off what it does i'm not even going to talk about it i'll just turn this on until we get one package out actually hold on a second you know what i forgot to do i forgot to add a sensor hold on i'm gonna to need to add some sensors to it so that it's actually automatic and not just me doing it manually so what I'm doing here is actually just a quick um, timer system thing. So I only need four or three logic gates and one timer. And I'll have this go for about, let's go five seconds. I don't think it needs to be that long, but we can adjust if we need to. And basically what this does is this turns on a bit, which then turns on a timer. And then that timer turns off the bit. And when this comes on, it, uh, oops. when this goes on it turns on the timer and then that goes for five seconds so let me turn that up even more so 16 seconds okay there we go so essentially what this does is just turn on a timer for 15 or 16 seconds i might need to make it a little bit longer but we'll see and so basically when that happens this will then turn on uh let me have a switch here so that I can have like, so I can turn this all on and off. I'll have a control panel where I can control all this at some point, but for now, we're just gonna have this amateur thing. So I'm gonna clean this up at some point, but that's that's fine. So let's just do that there. And this will go here and that'll be an and. Okay, so basically when something triggers this, it'll turn on the timer and then, you know, start this mechanism. So now, <laughs> long story short we're going to set this up all right we've got a package that flies out comes in starts the thing this pushes it i don't have walls actually i should probably add walls and probably add some sort of delay we'll see well it's okay so basically that's all it does all it does is just push the package all the way over my goal is originally if it didn't flip like it did it would be right around here or something and then i need to make something that will pick this up and then bring this all the way up there so that is going to be the goal for this episode we've already been recording for a while so i don't know how far along i will get but 
I will try to get somewhere. I'll at least try to get to a mechanism that picks up these things and can hold them pretty well. Okay, I thought about it and I think I know what I'm going to do. And I'm going to actually keep the, because I realized that I might be getting a whole bunch of packages all at once, I was planning on making some sort of claw that can pick these up one at a time. But I think for this episode, what I'm going to do is make a staging area so that it will kind of continue the conveyor belt. And so it gets to this line right here and then pushes it off into a waiting staging area where they eventually queue up to be lifted up onto this part one at a time or a group at a time. So I don't need to, you know, have it come all the way over here and then try to pick this up and then wait. And then another one might come when it's not ready yet or something like that. So I can have like a, a waiting area right around here or something. Or maybe I'll have it like stay the same height so I don't need to go down. That's what I'll do. So that's what I'll do actually. So let's start building that. What I'm gonna have to do first is build a platform. I will probably skip through a lot of the building process to save episode time because nobody really likes to watch a long episode. But if you do wanna see a longer episode of me actually building this stuff, let me know. But I have a feeling I already know what it's gonna, <laughs> what that answer is gonna be. Okay, so I'm gonna need a lot more net. I think I have some in the car still, but I'm gonna need a lot more to add some short walls to this. And once it gets here, the walls will end and there will be another sensor, which I need to build. Uh, I need to go back to the farm and get some more materials, but I think I have some stuff on me. The amount of tubes I have is uncanny, actually. I went a little bit overboard. I, need to, I do need a piston. I don't have any more sensors. I don't, well, yeah, I don't have any more sensors, so that's, that's too bad, but... Oh, I got some net though, I'll take that. Okay. So let's build what we can and then go back and grab that, but I'll skip, I'll skip all that. I guess I didn't really mention the elephant in the room and that is <laughs> the hours that I spent to build this thing right here. What all this is, is just a single piece of, well, there's another piece that I was trying to build, but that fell and I got too lazy to actually try to clean it up because the floor is glitching now, which is unfortunate. So I need to figure out either how to fix it, but basically this is just a single piece that goes all the way over atop the sucker thing for the trader. So this is kind of like my point of reference. So if I need to get the packages to the right of this line, so I need to make sure they go down somewhere over here. Not sure exactly how to do that yet, but we'll get there when we get there. Okay, after some time, not too long, I figured out a plan. I had a lot of tests, so I just have a bunch of packages just lying around now. I need to put these away somehow, but I have a system. I haven't automated it fully yet, but basically what I'm gonna do is actually not make another package, but I'm just gonna put it at the beginning over here. So if I just stick this right there, put my lift like right here or so, take this, put that, there and then quickly move the lift it'll launch it and then it comes over here and the similar kind of system happens and then it basically just pushes the package onto this conveyor belt type system right here which is pretty good i think i mean i'm not complaining about that and then it will come to an end right here it's kind of slow i could probably speed these up i have it rotating 90 degrees on level four um whatever controllers right now and then it comes over to the end and it should be relatively straight and then it gets evened out and placed right there and so it's pretty flush with this area and so now all i need to do is to have something come pick this up and bring it over there <laughs> That's gonna be my biggest feat because I'm gonna need a lot of pistons for that like a whole lot of level 5 pistons So it'll take a bit bit of time So I actually might do that like between episodes or at least gather the resources for that But I don't want to like wait more time to release this one out. So basically what we have here What we have here what I made was a system that it comes over here. I have two pistons. I have one piston that you know sees it, it pushes it over here um, because of the sensor at the very end that has, it's a level five sensor, I think a level three sensor sensing at 12. 
and then once it sees a box it pushes this i have a little timer so it waits a little bit and then it starts pushing this one as well so that it can go up a little bit i had it go up because this pipe right here was messing with the wheels and it wouldn't let them spin so i had to make this whole conveyor belt move up two blocks which actually was a lot harder than i thought it would to figure out how to work but i have a bunch of extra wheels now uh, i'll probably use them in the future but for now this is what we have it's a whole system that basically gets packages where they need to go so it's a package transport system i do i do have this sensor that when it goes on it turns off these wheels however the wheel the controller glitches back and so now even if they're if this thing is off they will still keep on spinning unless i either unconnect all this and reconnect them or delete the controllers or reload the game so i'm probably going to reload the game to get this working but also i want to make it so that it has a queue so i'm going to need to do some logic here i have some logic gates to make sure that we can only have one package at a time and that the second package doesn't push against this first package if there is a second one coming so essentially what we want here is for this once this sensor goes on this will go off and that will stop here i'm going to disconnect all that stuff real quick and that will actually this one worked okay so this one stopped properly which is good but these are still spinning for some reason even though they're not even close to being on so whatever anyways once this goes on this turns on this so once this goes off, I could really, I don't really need a NAND right here. I could just put a NAND right there, but that's okay. Uh, once this goes off, then that makes this one turn off, but it should keep these on unless there is a package on them. So what I'm going to have to do is get some more sensors. I have two more sensors, which might be enough, actually. I have two more sensors, which might be enough. So basically, we're going to have it so if we have a some sort of block anywhere in this area or so. So if there is a, I don't know how much space I'll need. And I, ugh, I need something to, ah, oh man, I need food. Oh, this is the worst. <laughs> so once we get, once we have a package here, it will turn off this. And that's gonna be the goal, right? And that will turn off this. And so then, we want to keep these moving so that we can keep the packages rolling in and kind of filling up this line right here. So in order to do that, we will have to, oh, I just thought of something. When the packages are coming up, they're gonna, well, that's fine. We can just make sure no packages get to this point. Hopefully we can have this elevator thing be fast enough that we don't need to worry about it, but it probably won't be. Anyways, once we have a package on this point, it'll turn this off and then we'll have a sensor here sensing if there is a package on this set of wheels if there is then it will turn off um then it will turn off this set of wheels all right that's okay perfect <laughs> i know i'm not making sense right now i'm just kind of thinking while talking at the same time i'm not really good at doing both i'm more of an internal processor if you're into that kind of personality stuff so Processing, outward processing, I'm gonna to try to do that now. And essentially what happens here is there will be an AND gate right here, meaning that if this is, well, let me put this a little bit closer to this gate right here, okay. So if this is on, right, and there is a sensor there, then it will make sure that this, or, and there is a box on it, I moved the sensor. I just moved the sensor. I was trying to explain it, but then I thought of a thing. I want the box to be at the front of the line, not the back, so we can make sure it gets all the way to the end right here at the very least. So basically, if this there's a box on it, we want this to turn off. So we're gonna need to turn this into a NAND. So right now it's on because there is nothing on it, but then once you get here, I'll need to make this into, oh no, I need a higher level sensor. Well, maybe I can scrape by if I have it over here. So if I go here, that logic gate will go off and it should hopefully stop these wheels. I'm not too sure if it will or not because the glitch might come back, but we're just gonna hope and pray for now. So, okay, and that's that. And so then we're gonna have to do the same thing so that if there is, um, oh wait, we need to change this. So we need to put that there. And so now if this is on, meaning so if this 
turns off and there is a box right here. We need to move this to the front of the conveyor area. So if we move this sensor to this part right here, make that into four. And then we put this right there. What we're gonna do is, so if this is on and this is on, right like that. So we connect that NAND to that AND and make this into a NAND. And so now, okay, I think I've got it figured out. Okay, so here, my simple brain is probably overcomplicating this, but this is all my simple brain could understand. Basically, I turn this sensor on. So if this goes on, that turns on this logic gate. And then what we do is if that logic gate is on and there is a box here now, what it does is here, let me actually just show you. So let me just put that right there, right? So if that is on and this goes on, it turns off um, cause this, this thing right here is connected to the controller. It will eventually, I mean, once I get, the, once I reload the game, it'll turn off this controller, stopping any box that gets to this point. And that's good. And so now moving forward, if, as you can see, this logic gate is connected to this controller. And so now if this one is off and then a box gets to this point, you can see, well, there's no box at this point yet. So that's why it's still on. So now if we just cover it up with a bob block or something like this, and then we get to this point, you can see the thing turns off and that will stop this controller. And so if we cover up this controller now, and then we come back here, it's the same exact repeat. This controller will get turned off. But if these, if this controller wasn't blocked, it wouldn't move at all. And it would keep moving it forward until it got to this point blocking it. So it's kind of like a conveyor belt, you know, logistics type system where it knows if it's getting overfilled and then stops itself from, you know, overflowing, if that makes any sense. So I need to delete this block, but I don't want to accidentally make this whole thing fall over. So we're gonna, basically that's how I have it all the way down. Unfortunately, because of the way this piston pushing works, this one won't be considered a holding point. It'll actually just be always on. I, I, I could use a switch or something, but it's just a NAND and an AND connected to each other there, nothing else. And so basically it'll just move up to here and that's where it stops. So I can have up to one, two, three in line, which is not a, not a lot as I kind of wanted. I wanted more, but I don't know. It'll, it'll do big, <laughs> it'll do for now. So all we have to do now is just test it out and then I'm gonna call it a day. Cause this is, this has been a lot of work, honestly. It's been a lot of, a lot of fun though. It's been a while since I've had like some fun automating all this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna hope, I'm really gonna have to pray that the scrap mechanic physics are consistent enough for uh, <laughs> this to work because this really relies on consistency of the physics of a lot of things really. But here goes nothing. Let's do the first test and see if it goes all the way through. And then we'll test three more after that. All right, test number one. I need to trigger this thing a little bit. Actually, all I have to do is just kind of like run into it and push it back. The sensor should see it. Okay, here we go. All right, that goes. And then that comes there, sensor sees it. I don't think I need a delay on the sensor and that pushes it in. And it looks like it's lopsided a little bit in there. I might need to make the walls a bit higher if that's the case, but I think that's fine for now. Um, and while that slowly goes, I mean, you can see how it goes. So I'm gonna go start the next test. Just get out the way. All right, there we go. That's made it. I mean, that's two in a row. That's actually made it all the way over. So the sliding physics, the reason why I use net was because it has it's the cheapest option with the lowest friction that I have. There's probably some low friction ones, but they're pretty expensive to make. This is, you know, double the metal that you use. So I'm not going to complain. All right. So now once it gets to this point, let's see what happens. I might be misjudging the size of these boxes and need to move this sensor over a little bit. Uh, oh yeah. I forgot to reload the game. Ugh. All right. We're loading back in. I kind of messed up things. So what I'm going to have to do is actually just take that back and see if these controllers are still broken. I think they might be. Hold on a second. Let me test it out and see if they are. 
What do I need to do to fix this controller glitch? Because these shouldn't be spinning anymore. Or at least this section shouldn't be. But yeah, I'll play around with it off camera. Hold on, let me try again. Okay, I think I figured it out. What I had to do was actually just re <laughs> reconnect all the bearings. So I have to basically do this all over again. <laughs> I don't know why it's like this. So what I'm gonna have to do is like take off the loop and make sure this is not going to be on anymore so I need to like turn off everything and then reconnect the engine bearings and then try again and then it shouldn't have that infinite movement glitch but I'm not really sure if that's completely 100% you know the fix but it's a temporary fix at the very least so let's just set these up again real quick and I won't make them any faster I think it's pretty cool to watch them go slowly so I'll just make them the same speed unless you guys are like you know screaming because of it but I doubt you would, you guys are mature. Okay, I believe that is the last of them all set up. We are going to do a U small test. So now if I remove, well, I'll just gonna remove this one. It goes, I put it back, it stops. It'll take some time to stop, but it does eventually stop. I mean, it'll, it does that angle lock thing. So I really don't know. I think someone left a comment about a fix for the angle locking thing, but if you guys, do know, let me know again, because I don't know where that comment is. I get a lot. So what I'm going to do is let it go now again. And then if I'm, well, let's see if the same thing works for this one. I'm going to assume that it will. This all works. We're going to just test it out again. <laughs> all right, take number two. Even after the reload, it seems like the pushing physics are still working normally, I guess. And this is still going. I could probably make this a little bit faster, but... It's fine for now. All right, now let's see what happens over here. We have a thing blocking that. So now it should stop somewhere around here. Hopefully, that's the goal at least. Oh boy, I'm getting kind of nervous. Here, let me get a better view of the, uh, what is it called, logic gates. Okay. And they've stopped. Okay, it looks like they've stopped. Pretty good, and now it's gonna be just sliding down, but it won't be too much of a problem. However, I guess the big problem is I might need to make this a little bit sooner on the, like move this back where it was before because it, I don't know what I'm gonna build to pick this up, but it might get in the way, but we shall see. Or like when it moves forward, it will probably lean on it and then hit it, but who knows? We'll, we'll get, we'll cross that bridge again when we get there. So now we're gonna do the next test. Okay, slide that in. All right. Looks like it went fine. Oof. This one was a little short. However, I think it was because of the placement of the tomato thing that I put. I don't think I put it in right. So we're going to assume that was just user error, not physics error, but it could very much be a physics difference, honestly, knowing the game. We're gonna let that go on its own for a bit and we're gonna try to see if we can get one more one like at the same time. Shove you in there and boom goes the dynamite okay perfect now okay so that one stopped up there pretty well actually i don't think that'll be a problem honestly there'll be room if i move this sensor back some too so now if we put it there those wheels stop and now we have a queue of four packages ready to be picked up and technically i could probably do uh maybe not i probably if I redid this part, I could probably do a fifth one and have five packages waiting at a time. But honestly, I'll stick with four for now because I don't think I'll be able to transport four at the same time easily. But we'll see. I hope you guys enjoy. I think the auto farm also went and harvested the tomatoes. However, I think some loading issues went on so it didn't plant them again. But I'll fix that or maybe it might be just because of my distance away from the farm itself. As always... I don't know how I did that. Okay. As always, I hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, night, or evening, and I will see you next time.